Hello and welcome back again to Archaeology 101. In today's topic we're going to kick off 2024 with the earliest hunting weapons in the human past. Purely out of interest, I wanted to know what the definition for a hunting weapon was. And good old Wikipedia came up with this answer because none of the other ones were particularly sufficient. Hunting weapons are weapons designed or used primarily for hunting game animals for food or sport as distinct from defensive weapons or weapons used primarily in warfare. The Oxford English Dictionary Online as a definition for weapon was an instrument of any kind used in warfare or in combat to attack and overcome an enemy. Now in archaeology, particularly Paleolithic archaeology, it's very difficult to distinguish the two. A hunting weapon could easily be used as a combat weapon and I'm not especially going to try and distinguish the two, but I just thought this would be an interesting exercise to go over and something to think about as well. So both hunting weapons can also be combat weapons, but we're mostly going to be looking at hunting today. Paleoanthropologists have used chimpanzee studies as analogies for what the oldest hunting tools may have looked like. The Fongoli chimps from Senegal, for example, were observed using hunting tools and they were observed making and using spears, which are just sort of sharpened sticks. And they stabbed these at animals and used them to investigate hollows to either drive out animals or get something like honey and just use them that way. Interestingly, it was mostly the females who used spears. The male males of the group they were observed using wooden clubs but these were rare and they were often used only for aggression displays more than anything else they weren't really used to hunt a colobus monkey for example there was cultural variation of tool form amongst different troops so each troop has a different way of making tools which you also see in uh, human tool making as well there's cultural variation what the the investigators did note though, however, is that chimps aren't very good at throwing. Their hand-eye coordination isn't quite what ours is. And they mostly use things like stones for smashing open hard foods like nuts and seeds. They don't really throw, that's more for stabbing more than anything else. So this is an interesting analogy of what the oldest tools would have looked like. They're probably some form of sharp stick like a stabbing tool. That seems quite likely. The chimpanzee studies are a great way of looking at what organic tools our ancestors may have used, but the archaeological record is very fickle and it doesn't preserve organic remains very well. So the oldest human tools we have are stone tools. The first human toolkit was known as the old Doan toolkit and the oldest date we have for this is around three million years old, and it comes from a place called Lake Victoria, which is in Kenya. And you can see an example of a old Doe and Stone toolkit down in the left hand corner. And you can see that they're very simple flake tools or simply like that stone pounder on the right hand side, which would have just been a crushing tool. But they could have been used to roughly chop things like wood and bone to get at things such as marrow. The original culprit, the creator of these stone tools, was probably a hominin like Paranthropus, who was around at the time. And they would have been using these relatively crude stone tools to crack open bone at the shore of Lake Victoria. There is quite poor sampling of animal bones prior to the year 2 million. So the dating of when humans actually started to use tools and start eating meat those sort of big questions, then these habits may have occurred much earlier and more frequently than we realise, purely because we, the assemblages of animal bones prior to two billion years ago just haven't been looked at very well. Our next case study is within Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. Olduvai Gorge is renowned for containing Paleolithic archaeology and being one of those key case studies in the origins of hominins. 
we're looking at a paper from Organista et al in 2023. And this paper looked at the Philip Tobias Corongo or PTK bed one. And it's a geological sequence which was deposited around two million years ago. Within this paper, the authors discuss how they identified numerous bone remains of young and prime adult waterbuck. And you can see an example of what a waterbuck looks like in the bottom right hand corner there. The hypothesis of this paper was that hominins such as Homo erectus, who appeared around that 2.8, 1.8 million years ago band, they were going to this water source to ambush waterbuck and then take either whole carcasses or partially uh, whole carcasses with flesh on, which they indicate as being either early access or very likely evidence of hunting these waterbuck. And they were taking these carcasses to the PTK bed area, and then they were then further processing them there. What the report doesn't really discuss is what technology was used to kill and butcher the prey with. So our next slide will go into what that technology may have looked like. The stone tools on the screen are some of the most iconic archaeological artifacts that we have. These are hand axes and they began to be manufactured around two million years ago in what is known as the Ashurlian period. Two million years ago is when Homo erectus started to emerge in Africa, and it probably was Homo erectus who first created these tools. They're much more complex to manufacture than the old Doan toolkits, and any creator of these has to think ahead uh, about how they're going to make it. And they have to think about each different strike on a block of flint or chert or whatever stone you're using. You have to th really think ahead about how you're going to manufacture the stone tool. So that also has quite big implications on cognitive ability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I digress. These are probably a multifunctional tool, hence why they're often dubbed the Swiss Army knife of the Paleolithic. They were used for processing wood, and they were also used as a butchery tool. So being able to hack up thick pieces of mammal bone, get at the marrow, chop the meat up, and be able to get extract that goodness from the bones. So that might have been what was being used to extract meat from the PTK beds, water bucks, for example. I have seen some papers which have gone into the efficacy for these tools being killing weapons. Uh, they may have been a throwing tool. I saw a paper which took people like javelin and discus throwers to be able to throw these. And some of them were able to be thrown about 40 meters, but that's a trained athlete. And I can't personally see Homo erectus using these tools as a killing frisbee. I think that they're definitely a processing tool more than anything else. We will, however, go into hunting weapons now. The direct evidence for human hunting tools is surprisingly lacking all the way throughout human history up until 400,000 years ago. In 1911, an amateur archaeologist was on Clacton on Sea in Essex, wherein he discovered in a Paleolithic freshwater deposit a U point, and this came to be known as the Clacton Spear. What he found at, the, at this time was the oldest human spear that we currently have. It's 400,000 years old, and this must have been manufactured by what was contemporary hominins at the time, either Homo neanderthalensis or even late Heidelbergensis. Back in the mid 20th century, there were discussions whether this was either a spear or perhaps it was something else like a digging stick. But the consensus nowadays is that this is probably the earliest example of a human spear. The spear had been treated by fire, so maybe it had been fire hardened, maybe to strengthen it, although there are discussions now that fire hardening actually makes wood more brittle and therefore breaks more easily. So the other hypothesis was that it had been heat treated so that it was easier to sharpen. 
We now move on to one of my favourite archaeological sites, and that's the Schoenigen Spears. This site is like a crime scene. It shows human hunting tools in direct correlation with large prey animals. In 1994, in a lignite pit in Schoenigen, Germany, the first of what would become 10 spears were discovered. These were mostly made from the trunk wood of spruce trees, and they were dated between 337 and 300,000 years old. They're surprisingly long as well. They're between seven and a half and six foot. There's been a lot of discussion over how these spears were utilized, and there were great big arguments over whether these were throwing or stabbing spears, and whether the Neanderthals, who are contemporary with this time period, were able to throw spears, but the consensus now is that there was probably a mixture of hunting and throwing spears in this assemblage. The animals that they were found in correlation with were mostly of horses, but there were other large bovids as well. So humans were collaboratively hunting to bring down large prey animals, probably not in a single event, but we're probably coming back periodically to what at the time was a lake shore to bring down large prey animals. I'd just like to make a reminder at this point that these are very rare examples of a relatively simple tool, which likely was being employed way earlier than even the Clacton spear. I'm not going to hazard a guess as to when, because I'll be very wrong, but maybe even prior to Homo erectus, humans were using spears. And if anything, the chimpanzee studies show you don't have to have an especially large brain to be able to create some simple sharp spear to use to hunt prey with. Before I reach the conclusions, I'd like to just discuss the Upper Paleolithic inventions and how Homo sapiens got a bit more creative with hunting technology. I will, of course, touch on bow technology, but I thought it would be interesting to also discuss the lesser known spear thrower or atl atl as it's also known. In crude terms, if you think of one of those dog ball thrower toys, it has very similar applications, wherein you could attach a dart or a spear to your thrower, and then you can double your throwing range and create a very effective killing weapon, but also be at a distance. The oldest example of an atl atl is from La Placard in France, which was dated to around 26,000 years old. However, there are assemblages which point to this invention coming much earlier, around 50,000 years old in Europe. Even though these dates are European, uh, the technology for projectile weapons most likely originates in Africa. And we'll move on to bows now, the more interesting one. The oldest examples of bow technology we have in Africa comes from South Africa in Sabudu Cave, where arrowheads were found, and these were dated to 64,000 years old, and that's the oldest evidence we have for bow technology. We don't find physical bows until about 9000 BC, and these are found during the Mesolithic period in Denmark. Let's just recap what we've looked at in this presentation. We started off with the chimpanzee studies of the Fongoli chimps in Senegal, and they were being used as analogies of what hu very ancient humans could have been using, what kind of organic technology that could have been used, even by a very small brained hominin. And chimps clearly have the cognitive capabilities of creating spear technology. The oldest stone tools that we actually have in the archaeological record date to three million years ago, and these only seem to indicate scavenging tools, the chopper tools of the old Doan. When tools were first used for hunting technology, we don't really know. The oldest hunting spear that we found were between 400 and 300,000 years old, but humans were probably being able to hunt by at least a million years ago, and this probably came down to a species like Homo erectus. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I'll leave the figures and the bibliographic links in the description below if you want to have a look through, and I will see you next time on Archaeology 101.